Hello, hello, hello. Uh, good evening, everyone who came. Uh, how are you today? I hope fine. Uh, my name is Anton. I'm an employer brand manager um, in Reich, um, uh, in European offices of Reich. And welcome to Reich Tech Club. Uh, Reich Tech Club is a community of uh, developers, designers, product managers, testers, customer facing people, and uh, it was made by Reich and Rikers for collaboration with uh, other companies and individuals for sharing knowledge and experience and achievements and so on. Uh, we already have about 1,500 people um, uh, on, in our community on meetup.com and keep growing, so join us. Um, uh, we will be happy. Um, for me personally, I really miss the times of offline events and uh, uh, I hope uh, to have them back as soon as possible. Uh, for example, in our uh, new office in uh, Prague, uh, I guess it might be uh, in this autumn. So welcome to uh, our on-site parties and meetups. Uh, but we keep uh, uh, going online and keep having fun uh, with these online uh, meetings. Um, and today we have uh, IDM. Uh, I'm personally a big fan of IDM music and FX Twin and so on. Uh, by the way, you can put your recommendations into the chat box of YouTube. But uh, today uh, IDM is about international design meetup and we will speak about the design processes and changes we faced in these COVID times and before i introduce the host of the event i'd like to remind you several uh youtube things uh all your questions and comments are welcome uh feel free to put anything you think uh, in the chat box and uh, the recording will be available so uh, you can uh, rewatch everything and please subscribe uh, to the channel uh, to uh, see the content from right to watch the content to watch videos workshops and so on and please push thumbs ups um, if you enjoy the video uh, and feel free to subscribe to our monthly newsletter the link you can see in the description and uh, all the announcements about Rector Club events are there, uh, so feel free to subscribe. And uh, that's it from me. Um, uh, finally, I'd like to introduce my lovely colleague, uh, Kate. Um, uh, she is a graphic design manager in Reich, and she is also a brilliant speaker and uh, podcast show host right now. Um, so um, go ahead, Kate. Uh, have a good evening. Thank you, Anton. Thank you. So hi, everybody. I'm Kate. I'm going to be your host today. As Anton already said, I'm a graphic design manager at Trike, and I have a really big international team. And also, I have a podcast. It's small and terrible. So we're going to talk about design now, because I do it much better than podcasts. So uh, I have an hour to introduce our speakers today, our panelists. And the first one is going to be Peter Pilat from Product Board. Hi, Peter. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Um, nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to do a quick intro about myself. Um, my name is Peter. I'm uh, working at Product Board as a product design manager. I've been with the company. It's going to be four years, actually, next month. So quite a lot. And I was actually the second designer that got hired. And uh, the team was very small back then. It was just 13 people. And now we're over 230. Um, so you can imagine that I've been through a lot of a lot of growth. Um, I've seen things break. I've seen things work. Um, yeah, so I'm happy to discuss our topics today and looking forward to the discussion. Yeah, thank you. I'm really excited to hear your story and also to discuss all the questions today. Thank you. Awesome. Our next guest is Martin Turchka from Avast. Hi, Martin. Hi, guys. My name is Martin. I'm from Avast. Uh, I'm working at Avast more than seven years. This year it will be almost eight years. 
Uh, so something like a veteran here. Uh, and that's what I'm doing. Uh, I have a responsibility for the major product portfolio, mainly for the desktop products and for the product innovations. So let's see what this COVID situation will bring. Yeah, welcome, Martin. Welcome. And our next guest is from Reich, my colleague, Amal Tapalov. Hi, how Amal. Yeah, yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm honored to be here and thank you for having me here. Uh, okay, uh, okay. let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm senior web designer at Reich. I'm the first designer hired here in Prague. Um, and uh, so um, also I am from Tent Enthusiast, UX UI, UI lover. And uh, I hope you will find my story exciting and uh, useful. Yep, uh, and I'm looking forward to share with you and discuss the topics about remote work. Thank you. Thank you, Amal. And our last but not the least panelist today is Michal Panushko from Commerce Banka. Hi, Michal. Uh, hi, Kate. Uh, hi, everyone. Have a great evening. Uh, so my name is Michal Panushka, and I'm from Commerce Banka. Uh, the third biggest bank uh, in the Czech Republic. Uh, I am in Komerční banka for one and a half year. Uh, so I'm novice if I am comparing with you. Uh, I'm chapter lead uh, responsible for UX, UI, copy and UX research area. And uh, our growing design team in KB has now around 40 people. I'm looking forward for our panel discussion and for your questions. Thank you so much. So how it's going to work today? Each of the panelists prepared their own story about 2020 in their teams or in their lives. And also, I have some questions I really want to discuss with other designers. So what we're going to do today is what we will hear for some stories. And also, we will discuss some questions. Really simple. I hope you will enjoy it. And it's going to be interactive enough. Don't hesitate to ask questions in the comments and give us a feedback, because we will really appreciate it. And we would like to start today with the story of Amal. Uh, Amal joined Reich right before the COVID, and ha he have an excited, exciting story to share with us. So, Amal, go ahead. And good luck. Thank you. Uh, okay, okay. Let me share my screen. Uh, okay, let's go. Okay, can you just, you, you can see my screen? Yeah, we can. Okay, nice. So uh, today I'm going to share my experience, how I joined Reich and overcome uh, 2020. So it's name lockdown in solo. Okay, uh, yeah, introduction I already had, like I'm senior web designer at Reich. I'm uh, with Reich uh, uh, more than one year. Also, uh, I'm front end enthusiast at writing codes, uh, UX UI lover. So without any further ado, uh, I would like to share with you a uh, quote which uh, resonated with me a lot and became a core for me for 2020. Yep, obstacles are an opportunity to express and practice virtues such as patience, courage, humility, reason, justice, and creativity. And indeed, so this quote uh, works for me uh, as well. At the beginning, what does it mean yeah, for me? It meant that uh, I joined Reich uh, on March. The 2nd of March was my first day at Reich. And uh, yeah, this is expectation which I had. A uh, new company, a new meet company, yeah, team buildings, office life, workshops, new friends and acquaintances, all team together, a new experience. And indeed, uh, I got a new experience especially uh, that after two weeks since I started work at, at Reich, uh, lockdown has been announced. And so this picture, it's kind of me. Uh, this uh, it illustrates perfectly uh, as I felt at that moment. And the biggest uh, obstacle I faced up to was so lack of communication. Because I know that, that so there are some people around me, but I have never met them in person and it was quite tough. And here, uh, the three highlights, which I remember quite good, that I had time to get to know real people. Uh, and in real, I mean that uh, I, I met them in person. 
Uh, also, I feel lack of integration because you know, so two weeks it's not it's not too much time to be integrated to new company, new new environment, and so on, and do super fast onboarding because uh, uh, we. Uh, we were we already working on on big projects such as so brand refresh, and uh, yep, two weeks two weeks after work from home begins. Uh, all all these guys, this denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. I met this is the pure psychology, you know. But instead of focusing on each of them, I I decided to neglect uh, first four and focus only on acceptance. I, yeah, it, it, I decided that if you if you can uh, if you can uh, change um, situation around you, just it, you try to adapt to it. And next stage was to adapt. Yep. And also, I got no time to get set because, uh, in my opinion, that if you are optimistic and in the, in good mood, you can work better and deliver better, perform better. And uh, so next, this is the four insights uh, I I got I would like to share with you that uh, first one timing is everything and you need to uh, improve self-management skills if you didn't complexity of self-discipline because so near you there is a couch in your home office and which which calling you and the biggest one biggest insight that I am my own best boss because like physically I'm, I'm working alone and I, I need to manage everything which uh, I'm responsible for. Next one, this is me and stairs. But yeah, you can ask me what stairs does mean. Uh, this is the potential. Uh, I feel that so there is some potential for me, and I feel inside of me that uh, th this is a good time to express myself, to help the team, and and use this opportunity uh, working working from home alone, like physically, and uh, even John Adams, the second president of the U.S said that every problem is an opportunity in disguise. But uh, the, the challenge is to find this opportunity which is hidden. So in front of me, I saw this picture, risk, reward, and risk, privilege, uh, reward. Uh, because uh, like previously, I was working uh, only in office, like the classic style. And here, the unusual, unusual environment this is my home became my office. and it was quite interesting for me, and uh, I decided to challenge myself to deliver deliver a good results, uh, perform uh, better than ever. And after some time and efforts and successful performance, I was awarded by trust and respect from my uh, head of design and my team, which I really thankful for it. And yep, the picture picture has changed. Yeah, simple as that. So next one. Uh, I feel that I became uh, part of the team and part of the ship. Yep, uh, we communicate closely. We became friends and and good colleagues. And uh, we we decided to add some interesting meetings and things to our calendar, such as experience sharing, informal meetings, and uh, eventually it helped us to be on the same wavelength. Yeah, this is the top advice which. Uh, I wish I knew even when I was at school, I, yeah, maybe at school, uh, re retrain yourself to look at obstacles differently. It really works. It's not, uh, it's not working only in like in job context. Yes. But in, in life in general, this is a good one. And, uh, to conclude everything I said before, I would like to share with you the secret formula. Uh, obstacle response and output uh, and the key ingredient of it is response if you respond to obstacle with uh, positively with plus sign your outcome is going to be with plus sign as well and uh, if you respond yeah, negatively with minus sign the outcome is going to be the same with minus sign yep this is it yeah, thank you very much i hope you will find my you found my story insightful and helpful and yeah, yeah thank you very much thank you so much mal uh it's so great to hear your story right now because you i remember when you just joined Reich and we all went to the remote and 
it's also influenced a lot of other teams because my team have three newcomers in a week before and week after of the start of a pandemic. And it was really hard to switch the way how we onboard newcomers, how we work and how we operate. And I have a question for everybody now. So remember the March of 2020, what was your expectations from the remote work? What you thought would happen in the future with your team? So Peter, what's your input? It's a, it's a tough question. Um, and the reason why it's tough is that Projectboard since day one was a distributed team. So we already were split across two different time zones. So we had office, um, we still have office in San Francisco, and then we had office in, in Prague. And, uh, and so we were actually used to this kind of, um, you know, distributed collaboration. So nothing has changed uh, for like the cr cross ocean collaboration, besides the fact that, you know, you had your engineers, you had your other designers in the same time zone because you know the teams they, they grew. Um, besides that, you you know you stopped going to the office, and you just had to take all the all the meetings through Zoom, and and like you know after having five or six or seven meetings a day, it became so exhausting um, that we had to do something to just um, balance that right. Um, and so we, we then started uh, thinking about, hey, how can we actually implement some kind of mechanisms so the people still feel engaged? Um, we were experimenting with days without, like no meetings days, right? So no, no meetings Wednesdays, that's actually something that happened. And, you know, some people are following that, some are not, um, but it's, 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 man it's not mandatory. It's just like a recommendation so that people can actually um, uh, have some focus time. Um, uh, or, you know, few things that we did that we, we created sort of like a virtual offsites. So we would, you know, hang out either and like it was still on a Zoom. So we'd hang out on a Zoom whole day, but we wouldn't be working. We would be doing team bonding activities. Uh, we would be chatting about the vision. So it was not like a, you know, business as usual, but it was really refreshing, I would say. Thank you so much. And Martin, what was your expectations? Yeah, so uh, and I was in, and in in my team or in our teams, uh, I was thinking that uh, let's say let's stay at home a few days or weeks, you know, and just try another type of cooperation, and then after that we can go back and work as normal. Uh, but right now it is totally crazy. Uh, but the major concern that I was was, and it was it, it is the funny that what about food? You know, it looked at the reality that we have to cook ourselves at our home. Because one of the major benefits that I was, it was that we had a canteen in Prague, office and Brno office, and we got you know breakfast, meals, you know lunch, and everything, uh, and plus a great, great, co uh, great coffee. So this was our the, ma the major concern in the in the short term perspective. And in general, we end up in the same situation as in the product board with Peter that uh, Avast have three main major sites in Prague, Brno, and London. The design team was quite a split between Prague and Brno. So we know uh, a lot about the remote communication with the stakeholders, with the colleagues from Brno, colleagues from Prague, uh, between sites. So this was not the, the major change for us. Uh, what was great, let's say, refreshment was the Zoom call with beers and wines. Uh, so it was something like another hang up and, 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 and other types of parties uh, via Zoom. So this was quite, quite funny. Uh, but again, at the beginning of the few months, because right now it's quite tired to be still on the Zoom and even drink <laughs> via, via Zoom. And, and my personal concern was uh, that at the moment of the lockdown, we kicked off one of the major you know, innovation projects. And we need to start thinking how we can manage and how we can put the product into the right direction when we cannot see each, each, each other in front of the whiteboard and we can communicate with the key stakeholders with, with the C-level about the expectation, goals, and so on. And, and mainly how we are going to hire a new people for this new innovation project, you know? And, and why we are, how we are going to drive the onboarding of the new people uh, uh, into, into this stuff. So this was quite difficult and it is right quite difficult, but we are working on some 
great plans, great gui guidelines for onboarding together with the HR. Uh, so the onboard was the, the, main, the major concern for the for hiring. Thank you so much. And Michal, what do you think? What do you remember from March of 2020? Okay, so maybe it was not March 2020, it was uh, February, uh, because my sto uh, our story with COVID uh, started a little bit sooner. You know, our team was hit, uh, I think, uh, as, the, uh, as the first in the Czech Republic, just weeks before everyone else, and uh, because one of uh, our developers, so uh, his father was in Italy and he was in, in connection with, with someone who had coronavirus. So I, I remember clearly that uh, it was uh, one Tuesday in February 2020, maybe night 30 in the evening. And uh, I, I had a call for, from my boss that from tomorrow, we are staying in quarantine, you know, without uh, any warning, without any preparation. We are not so lucky as the guys who has the offices uh, around the globe. We have only one uh, office, but still we had some experience from home office because uh, in 2018, uh, we started uh, a limited home office uh, as the team members uh, can have uh, two days. Uh, it was Wednesday and Friday and they, they can stay at home. So we had basic uh, infrastructure ready, you know, but this infrastructure uh, was not ready for like uh, two, 1,000 uh, more people uh, on Skype every day. So we had some uh, pretty tough first day. So my first thought uh, was uh, like, wow, I'll have 100 minutes a day more, which I can give to my family. That's, that's perfect, but I was absolutely wrong, uh, as, you, as, you, as, as you all know. Uh, second thought, uh, oh, we are not ready to have full home office at, uh, as we are missing some tooling, uh, we are missing some hardware, uh, headsets, external monitors, uh, and, and so on. And uh, we have some infrastructure uh, problems as the infrastructure was, was, uh, was not uh, dimensioned to such a number of colleagues working from home uh, on the same time. But very fast reaction from our infrastructure team and everything worked perfectly like uh, in a week or something like that. Uh, and uh, third, uh, we need to grow and we need to hire new people. So how we will be doing in the hiring, it will be quite complicated. And maybe fourth thought, uh, how we could deliver a new bank remote as this is the biggest project and this is the future of Commerci Banca. And uh, above all this, uh, I can feel the fear uh, from the team members from the unknown. So this is my first impression from February and March 2020. I remember the March of 2020 and I was really happy because I was a huge fan of working from home. But when I started to work from home for like third month, I wasn't happy like at all because I can't be at home anymore. I'm working for like 20 hours a day. And also for us at Rike, work from home came at the same time as with the most active stage of our rebranding. And my team did like 600 assets in three months. And we were like extremely tired. And I still think that it influenced us in some good way. And we will talk about benefits in the future. But anyway, I think a lot of us have expecta expectations which went completely wrong at the end. Like we didn't expect what will come in the future. And coming from this, I want to hear Martin's story now. Martin, are you ready to share? Even if you're not, it's okay. But I hope you are. And also you're muted. You're muted, second oh, phrase. Yeah, <laughs> I'm back. This is, this is the basic mistake of the course. You know, <laughs> you are trying to present, but you are mute. Yeah, the next question is, can you see my screen? So I need to make it a two for that. Yeah. So I heard to share your story. Great. Can you see my screen? Great guys. So uh, hello again, uh, I'm Martin and let's go through my story about the lockdown and working uh, remote. 
So the first thing, what I personally discovered is this question. Can you see my screen? And especially in my life, because I am not living directly in Brno or in Prague with great, amazing internet. Uh, I'm living uh, next to Brno in a small village with the local Wi-Fi provider. And that's why my internet connection was poor. I dropped from lots of critical calls, you know, from, uh, from my colleagues from the sea level and so on. And again, I have to find some solution. How can I back? So it, it was quite painful at the the beginning that okay how can i work with this poor internet when i have to be non stop on the zoom calls and describe and provide the feedback and get feedback from my team and so on so this was quite quite frustrated but in next for example months or weeks it was just the fun you know because it is the reality that if you don't have great internet guys and colleagues have to, have to come with that and uh, we have a lot of sync offline, you know, on the Figma and on the, uh, on the and other tools. So even without internet and even without good internet, you can work perfectly remote and support your team, support the product and support your, your colleague. Next challenge, what uh, we discovered is that when your team is growing and, and our team uh, grows especially a lot in, in our division and for, for our product. Because uh, at the beginning of the COVID, uh, my personal team uh, had just six designers. But right now, our team is uh, has uh, more than or around 20 designers right now. Uh, some people left, some people joined, and so on. So uh, right now, we are around, around uh, 20 designers. And these people work on the, on the core products and, and the core innovations, which we are right now crafting at Avast. Uh, so the major challenge was how we can explain how we are working at Avast, how we can show them the product without the babysitting uh, or without explain and show where are the issues. Because if you are a newcomer in the company and you have to work from your home, you don't have your colleagues around you to ask. You know, you have just your boss. That's it. And all the questions has to be your boss. Your boss or your, man, your manager uh, had to help you to find the right person for the right question and so on. So it was quite stressful and quite quite complicated. And that's why we, we figure out the, the new proton onboarding when all information are available online. We have a new journey when the new guys will join uh, that you have to go through this journey. What are your main major contact for each product, for each segment? for each problem, you know, who is your contact for from the HR and so on. So this situation about the lockdown helped uh, a lot at Avast, especially about onboarding and how we are going to onboard the new people. And we are looking forward that these new processes and these new ideas will go live when, when we are going to back into the office in the next future. Uh, another key element was online collaboration. Uh, at the beginning, uh, the lockdown, we work mainly with the sketch file and the Zeppelin. Uh, the problem with the sketch, and you, I think you know it, that uh, everybody can have open sketch file on, on the device locally. Yes, you can have a sketch cloud or you can work with, with, with the Google Drive, but still you are missing up to date version. Uh, this lockdown situation boosts this transition even, even faster. So we, we left uh, sketch and Zeppelin combination and switch fully to the to the Figma and, and Miro uh, duo, and this was, I think, one of the best decisions in my career, uh, because with the Figma you have just one source of truth for everybody, for product management, for designers, for for product managers, and also for uh, for stakeholders, let's say sales and so on, and and everybody can see what you are crafting, how you are crafting, why, and and what is. What is the final output? And with Figma and with the plugins, it also unlock a great potential of our design systems, communication, and another uh, and another stuff. The major thing, this was just the funny, but the major thing is, is your family, uh, and especially if if you have kids, child, whatever, you will spend your whole time in your household with the family and friends, and you need amazing support from them you know uh, in my situation i have uh, i have a small daughter 
uh, in the beginning of the lockdown, uh, she had one and a half year. Now it is two and a half years. So the time is running pretty fast. And uh, it was quite funny, you know, when uh, you have to work, you have, you have to present something and your daughter will come to your room and to your home office uh, that hey, you, have, you, have to find, or you have to play with me or let's read some uh, stories and so on. And without, especially my family and each team member, without family support, uh, we will not be there uh, in let's do it and with the motivation what what we have right now so we have to share and i would like to say a big thank you to to all families uh, of my colleagues and also to my family about it and for them especially one of the funniest moment what i personally had is that i i had a quite a big meeting with with ceo uh, and with several uh members from from the c level and in the middle of the presentation where when i'm trying to present the new vision and the new design ideas uh my daughter came to my room and, and she uh, wanted to wear some fairy tales immediately. You know? So what I can do? So I just stopped the call even before, even in front of sea levels and and uh, and these top managers, and just went play with my daughter because this is the situation of the lockdown. You know, the family has to be on the first place. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Martin. I think you have an extremely relatable story for a lot of people, both in terms of love to the family and also in terms of love to the online products and the, the products we can allow you to collaborate online because, you know, before remote work, complete remote work, not like two days from home office, uh, we print a lot of stuff. We used a lot of physical materials. We used like sticky notes together. Mm -hmm. And I remember how at the beginning of all of this, my team had the brainstorming in Miro because we had no other tool to brainstorm together. We didn't have a whiteboard anymore. And the sticky notes, which were mentioned in the title of all of this. And I think this usage of online tools is a really big benefit for us for the whole this time and also for the future, because we can move faster, we can collaborate better, we can work from our phones, we can work from everywhere. And of course, it's extremely important to like rely on your family, to take care about your family at the time when you're working really hard. And I know with a lot of us became much more busier since we moved to, to the work from home. And for example, when all of this started, I bought Xbox to my husband for him to have a nice time while I'm working 12 hours a day. <laughs> and getting back to the benefits and to the tools and to the good stuff happened with us, even if we had some bad stuff. What is C right now as the benefits of reward uh, of remote work for your team and yourself personally? We already talked about some refreshments, but maybe there's something else what you see right now would change for the better side. So, um, Michal, what do you think? Uh, all right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Kate. So uh, I can see a couple of benefits, but to be honest, uh, also a lot of disadvantages. So maybe I'll start with the be benefits. Uh, new way of working and cooperation. You know, it was hard to imagine uh, in the past time when we can have a, a effective uh, workshop brainstorming some ideas without sticky notes in the office. But uh, with Miro, uh, we showed to, to ourselves, but also to the, the rest of our company, that it's possible. And uh, I think that from the corona, uh, we will use only Miro uh, for these types of, uh, of, of exercises, even uh, if we will be in, in the office, uh, because there is a lot of advantages. Uh, you have it or, or already in, in some, let's say, online form. Uh, it's accessible for from everywhere, for everyone, uh, and so on. So this is like a first, first area. Uh, maybe second one uh, is hiring. You know, now our new colleagues uh, could be from the whole country, or maybe uh, I would say from whole related time zone, or even maybe not the related time zone from, from the whole world. We still have a, a little bit trouble with English uh, uh, in our teams, but this is uh, something what we are working on just to use this, this great benefit. Uh, 
And uh, another one I can see uh, in the during the meetings uh, as uh, our building is really, really large. I think it takes you 10 minutes just to walk around. And if you have a meeting on uh, one part and you then you are moving to another meeting on the second part or second building. So it, it takes itself 10 minutes. So we are saving time uh, as just moving around a large building. Uh, it's easy to set up a five minute check uh, instead of uh, other types of communication, mail, instant messages, or to trying to uh, look for someone just if, if he or she is sitting in front of, uh, uh, of the desk. Uh, and I would say that uh, we are now ready and prepared, uh, survived almost uh, uh, everything as, uh, we quickly adapt uh, to the situation which was uh, ahead of us. Uh, for me personally, maybe again, saving time and, uh, and money for coffee, as I'm a coffee lover. So I, I bought a coffee machine uh, uh, right to my home. Uh, transport, uh, as I have it uh, 50 minutes to work from, from here, as I, I live on the uh, like uh, other, uh, other part of the Prague. Uh, from clothes, uh, eating, uh, and the necessary thing uh, you will buy during uh, your uh, way to work. Uh, I think I have more mental capacity to uh, do the work itself. Uh, it's there is a less stress and decision making. You know, uh, each morning I was standing in front uh, of my clothes, uh, of my wardrobe, just thinking, what should I wear today? So this is uh, just uh, completely uh, now out. Uh, and uh, to be honest, I also am working from my smart office lab. Uh, everything is tailor made and exactly uh, as I want, as, as I need. Uh, I have the hardware uh, I want. Uh, I'm working in perfect condition. Uh, I'm measuring temperature, I'm measuring uh, CO2. So if you can see so sometimes my uh, my lamp is blinking. So this is so it just, just telling me that the, I need a fresh air, that the concentration of CO2 is too high. Uh, I have their um, lighting uh, colors, you know. Uh, I have relax zone, you can see uh, so far, just step away from me. And uh, I'm eating homemade food uh, as uh, my uh, uh, my woman is uh, on maternity leave. But I can see that a lot of disadvantages. Uh, you know, this is something what we are fighting all uh, is how to find a proper work-life balance. Uh, my office is five steps away from my kitchen, so I can be online the whole day from the morning to the late evening. So there is no break that I need to move home uh, and, and so on. Uh, we are still learning uh, in the team what communication channel use and when, just to need not to be like overwhelming from communication from all around, from SMSs, Teams, Skypes, and, 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 and so on. Uh, we are no respecting breaks between meetings, meetings uh, after meetings without any break for just go to the toilet or some refreshment. Uh, sometimes we are fighting that uh, missing personal uh, interaction uh, in the kitchen. So it's just something can lost in translation. Uh, we are missing nature movement. You know, I used to have a 10,000 steps a day. Now uh, I'm, it's missing uh, and uh, I can see there's a big difference between colleagues uh, based on their situation, uh, where they live, uh, how many children they have, uh, how old are they, if they have a, a own uh, home office uh, and so on. And uh, we are also fighting a little bit with the processes because some of them are still not reflecting a current situation. Uh, for example, onboarding new people, it's a little bit complicated. So this is just from, from me, everything what came to my mind. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really impressed by your advanced workplace situation. Like I thought that I have smart watches and I'm like advanced, like, but no, I'm definitely not. Definitely not. So, Amal, what's your view on the benefits of remote work for yourself and the team? Yeah, uh, so 
in my mind, I got pretty the same like Michal. Yeah, but the, the first one is the spending time with my family, uh, which I really appreciate but, uh, because uh, I have more time, just more time with my family and really enjoy this time. Also uh, about the commuting. Yeah, but I'm, I'm living like the yeah, 30, 40 minutes from uh, office. And uh, so this time I can spend effectively like uh, prepare for the meetings or uh, yeah, yeah, do stuff which I am responsible for. Also, uh, there is uh, there is no like the office uh, the office interruptions. Like you know, people around you, uh, people working uh, behind your back, and so on. You can focus on real uh, the real work and be effective. Also, this is the one of the biggest one this is the flexible hours like uh, you can you can uh, create your schedule uh, as good as you want um yeah this is the biggest one i was i would say also um we created uh, useful uh, useful documentations like like the online onboard, the onboarding the guide how it's gonna be uh, if you want you can check on medium uh yeah this is a, a right medium account uh also we created a useful documents for stakeholders how to work with design teams how to communicate and so on uh internally uh we we figure out how to how to connect uh, in communication flows like uh with which tool we use and it's really it's really useful and um, what else um maybe a work life balance because uh after work, you can you can save a buffer time for you to to keep fit. Uh, for example, uh, yeah, do some workout because yep. Yeah, uh, for example, <laughs> it, it, yeah, Michal uh, Michal has uh, office five steps away from his uh, office. Yep, yeah, and uh, yeah, from the kitchen. But uh, I have a gym five yeah, stay away from my home office. Uh, yeah, this is it. I suppose that this is the. Uh, benefit which came to my mind. Thank you so much, Mal. So, Peter, what's your take on the benefits? I think the biggest benefit is that everything gets documented. What I what I mean by that is that you know if you're working either in Figma or either in Miro or FigGem, you know, lately, uh, everything gets documented. That doesn't usually happen. Like you wouldn't normally just you know, pause a whiteboarding session in, in the office, right? And just start documenting things. Maybe you do it after, but it's so much easier because when you're working in this you know, digital collaboration tools, everything gets documented by default. And then it's also, I, I really like what Michal mentioned that it's really accessible to everyone. So what we actually do is that we have design grids and I'll, I'm gonna talk about it more in, in my story. And there is that we actually record these design grids. And so when you get a feedback from your peer designers, you can then always revisit the recording and share that recording with your, let's say, engineers or a PM or, or another stakeholder. And this really helps you better promote the feedback that you got from the other designers and make sure that the, the solution is user-centric. I think you know, this is not only not only about the accessibility, but also about making the design process more transparent. Um, there's one thing that I like about Figma, and you know, you guys mentioned Figma; it's you know open to everyone. But they have this embedded this behavior of being open embedded as default by their business model. So they they have the true up business model, which means that you know you can invite anyone, and you don't have to pay for their for that seat until you hit uh, another quarter, right? And so this, what happens is that you can just very quickly spread the tool around the, around the company and there's no friction like, hey, you have to add a, um, a credit card details or you have to update your credit card details so that you can purchase another seat. No, you can just like invite how many people you want, let them use it, let, you know, have it open and then you're gonna pay for it afterwards. Um, so the transparency and the openness and, and the documentation is really helpful, especially for a, for a company like Product War, which is growing a lot. And every time a new a person joins the team, you don't want them to reinvent the wheel. You don't want them to discover something that was already discovered, something that you already you know, 
spend some time on and you, you design it, you know that's a dead end. You don't want them to do that again. Uh, so the documentation really, really helps with that. Great point about documentation. I think you know, when you're working at the office, you always rely on the expertise of the seniors. And like, you don't need to document stuff. You can go and ask that guy. But when everybody is working remotely and you have a lot of remote stakeholders and nobody can come and see something from your whiteboard, you need to document things. And it's also happened with us because in my team, we made guidelines about the ways how to put logo on a t-shirt. It's 100 page guideline. I'm not kidding. So, and... We need to make stuff like that because we want to be transparent and I think it's a great benefit for everybody and you're completely right. So, Martin, what do you think? Yeah, we are all of us also the same. We have the same situation as uh, with Peter on the product in the product board that everything is and has to be right now online. You know, We, we can have designs, comments, feedback, notes somewhere offline or just on the device somewhere, you know? So it increased transparently a lot, mainly between designers, developers, and stakeholders, you know? Uh, sales guy and, and product, product managers. And it boosts cooperation into a totally different level because everybody can see what you are doing and why you are doing and what will be the expected output. So it also helps to set the right expectation at the, at the beginning because in the in the let's say old times before COVID, when one designer was in the Prague or in the Brno, and the major stakeholders were in Prague, these two stakeholders in the Prague they can have a lot of kitchen talks, you know, or kitchen chat about the expectation, what the designer in Brno will do, and so on. And designer in the Brno was outside of this chat and talks. But with the online work, it shouldn't happen, and it it, it is it is almost impossible to do that. So. Uh, this was a great uh, for us, and we are looking forward how we are going to transform it, this cooperation, when we are go back in, into the office. And I can interest the benefit as is as I said that we cannot have this type of kitchen chat, you know, with strange de decisions and each major decisions idea or strategy right now has to be recorded or somewhere online on the paper, which will help understand the goal. And the problems which we are which we are going to fix, and it is available for for everybody. You know, everybody can see. Okay, this is the product board, or this is mirror board about this project, this task, this goal, and I can see why they are doing it and what is what is behind it. From the other hand, you know, we lost a lot of jokes uh, in the in the kitchen or in the canteen, uh, but for the jokes we can still have, and we are still have private channels on the Slack, so. This is, this is quite quite fine. Uh, another, for example, from the, another perspective, uh, a negative one is very similar to what uh, Michal shared, that right now you have office in your household and you have a feeling that you have to work you know, 20 hours per day or you can work 20 hours per day. Just wake up, you know, uh, clean your teeth and sit in front of PC, work, then jump into lunch, then again, and then few emails or few, few Slack communication before you are going to bed. And this is wrong. You know? And this put a lot of pressure into people and into, into, into team members. Uh, so we, we figure out that uh, we don't want to have any calls after the 5 uh, p.m. And I was a uh, few, few weeks ago, we, we announced across the whole company that we have Zoom free Friday. So on the Friday, it's forbidden to have a Zoom calls, uh, which is which was a great decision from 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 the top management, and it is also respected from 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 the top management. So Andrzej Wojciech, as our CEO, uh, highlighted that this is almost the mandatory for all your, all of us, uh, which also helped to calm down the situation and just focus on the stuff, not on the Zoom calls, but on the on the stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's really interesting to see how all of us are working in different companies and different businesses, but we still see the similar benefits and the similar struggles. And I think even if we have the differences in the ways how we work and in the starting situation, at the end, we all are in a pretty similar terms. Yeah, I think right now it's a great time to hear the Mihal story. 
Are you ready? Hey, th thank you. I'm ready. I start to sharing my screen. And uh, in the meantime, I'm glad that we are not the only one solving these types of problems. So thank you, guys. <laughs> all right. Uh, so first of all, uh, I would like to thank you for the possibility uh, to be here today and sh share my thoughts and experiences. Uh, for me, it was also great possibility to stop for a moment uh, in everyday sprint, uh, think about it and look back uh, what our team achieved and found a lot of uh, things which could otherwise uh, remain hidden. Uh, in this personal corona uh, corona story, I want to share you uh, share with you what happened in our teams when corona hit us. And one important note, uh, as a gift uh, to you, I prepared a few additional slides to my co conversation so you can look the, uh, at something nice instead of me. So uh, it's important to describe the situation in our team uh, in March 2020. <clears throat> Just uh, imagine that I am uh, five months with the team. Uh, still learning a lot of things about bank environment. Uh, so I'm originally from Telco uh, and, and, uh, and specific uh, as we are really, really regulated area. Uh, we are at the beginning of the most important project uh, for our bank, uh, as I already mentioned, but uh, keep it secret, but it's nothing less than a new digital bank. Uh, we are trying to set up uh, and testing new design process, uh, which uh, we want to use for building a new bank. Uh, we have scheduled thousands of personal uh, in-depth interviews with our key target groups. Uh, we are looking uh, and recruiting a lot of new people to the team. Uh, we have only partial experience with remote work. Uh, and uh, our design teams uh, working as an island uh, divided into current bank and, and the new bank. Uh, and we are without proper tooling, which allow us to cooperate remotely. Uh, white paper is, is really not enough. So what now? Uh, should we move left and right? Uh, what to do next? Uh, what is the most important? Where is the priority? Uh, and so on. And, and uh, it's fair to admit that uh, we were a little bit para paralyzed for a while and thought about how to proceed, but only for a while. Uh, we roll out our sleeves and start working really hard to deal with the situation. Uh, we have changed and modified, I think, about a thousand small things. Uh, but I want to share with you primarily those I see as a, a game changers. Uh, First of them, uh, I have to start with tooling uh, because you can have uh, the best team on the earth, but uh, when, when they can't work together, so it's useless. Uh, of course, we have uh, already some basic sets, but we were not ready to full remote. Uh, we immediately start looking around for some new ones. Uh, we made proof of concept with a lot of different tools. Uh, we tried almost everything on the market. And uh, I would like to share with you our whole recorded, uh, which save us. Uh, I guess I don't have to go into too much detail as you uh, all know this uh, set of tools. Uh, first of all, it's Miro, uh, universal tool for team collaboration with Endless Board. Uh, like all of us uh, to do a lot of things in the more effective way uh, or even impossible in the offline world. Uh, and it not only design teams love it. Uh, then Figma, as you already mentioned, for prototyping, designing, and building our design system uh, in combination with, with Axure, which allow us to create some, let's say, complex prototypes with some logic inside. Uh, and finally, uh, I must not forget Lookback uh, that gave us possibility to continue with user testing even more than, than before. Uh, I need to continue uh, with our design teams. Uh, just to explain uh, what I already mentioned, we have two design teams. One was working on current bank and one uh, on current channels, and the second one was working on the new digital bank. 
Uh, this came from some historical regions uh, as uh, UX UI competency started in the bank uh, uh, in, uh, a little bit uh, wild and uncontrolled. So there was a wall between these teams. So we connected design teams together. We set up some regular ceremonies like common statuses, uh, design reviews or sharing the knowledge. This was from my point really important. Uh, another one as a, as a third one. Uh, I see the shifting in the area of uh, user testing and research. Uh, we moved from, let's say, enthusiastic amateurs to position when we have super senior researchers who add tremendous value to our testing. Uh, also, thanks to the effort, almost everyone in the bank can meet regularly our clients, now, of course, online. Uh, and testing uh, with them became part of our DNA. We don't have to convince any, uh, anyone that testing makes sense, and we are testing even more in in COVID through Lookback. Uh, and maybe last thing to mention is design process. Uh, we prepare a set of supports, tools, uh, and templates uh, helping us uh, uh, to decide which design process to use uh, based on the problem we are solving and then make for each steps in the design process supporting template you can use to help us with the preparation and save some time. Uh, so these are four areas in which we made dramatic uh, change during last year. Uh, I have a feeling that we made a shift in one year that would normally take us uh, like three years. And please don't take me wrong. Uh, I'm talking about our environment in the company with thousands of employees where th the things take much longer than in the startup environments. Uh, and all this was possible only because of our exceptional team, the extraordinary effort and understanding to the mistakes uh, we made uh, on the way. Uh, and I would like to uh, thank them, uh, thanks them from the bottom of my heart. Uh, as they gave it and we are still moving. Uh, maybe a couple of words, what is next? Uh, we are still looking for the new colleagues uh, so as we have a big task ahead of us to uh, set up a team to be able to work in the most effective and logical way. Uh, we also continue in the new digital bank preparation. Uh, I see it like something uh, you are looking to be part uh, of once in a lifetime of in your working time. So it looks that our trips outside the comfort zone will continue and I'm looking forward to, to it. And maybe one, one bonus. Uh, here you can see the most popular phrases in KB during the COVID, uh, as we already mentioned. Confirm me, please, that you see the screen or oh, she can't or he can't hear us. Uh, I see that Michal has disconnected. I can't share the screen. I'll drive you to, to me. Uh, it, it's from Miro. Fig muffle again, and I don't have a powerful notebook. Uh, Skype is not working. Turn off your microphones and please stop killing that child if child is screening uh, in the background. So that's uh, that's my story. That's all from my side. Thank you. Your phrases is so funny. It's so funny, especially the last one. I I have a dog, and sometimes she's trying to eat my cat, and people are really nervous when they hear that. So I close her in another room to not scare you guys. So uh, thank you for sharing. You're welcome. And uh, before we'll continue, I would like to encourage everybody who's listening to us now to add your questions to the comment section because we will finish pretty soon. So if you want to ask something from this amazing gentleman, please do it now. And um, we already talked about past. We already talked about present. So what I want to talk right now is about future. How do you see the future of work for design teams? considering all the experience we had in the last year. So Amal, why don't you go first? Yeah, the first of all, I would like to ask the, uh, yeah, to say that the competition will be increased. I mean, the competition between designers and because for example, so any designers can be hired from, from, from any point of globe. And of course it's gonna be at the boom of companies like SaaS companies, like the, especially like about the project management platforms. 
uh, about uh, also the, the usage of uh, tools like Miro and FigJam. Yep, I saw the comments and uh, comments in the comment section uh, about the. What do you think about Miro or FigJam? FigJam is gonna it has a good potential because uh, it's it's the same environment when you're working on prototype and can share in one uh, whiteboard inside uh, Figma. Also, uh, uh, the possibility of hybrid work when you can work part, uh, partly at home and partly at office. It's really cool. I, I really like it. So maybe I will use it. <laughs> yep. Uh, also, I can see, uh, I hope that uh, it's going to be the increased maturity between designers, especially like with, uh, about the junior and middle role because um, so uh, there won't be a director head of design when uh, working so next to you and can see your work if or if you're working or if you're not. Yep, uh, this is about the maturity, of course. And uh, yep, the improvement in communication because it, uh, it, we still need to, it to communicate effectively uh, to bring some ideas to ideation process and it's very important to keep on the same, on the same line. Great, thank you so much, Mal. So Martin, what are your, your crystal balls saying? Yeah, so I will start from from the bigger uh, bigger perspective, from the company wise perspective, especially at Avast. So uh, right now we have from uh, from management the opportunity to to select which type of job you would like to do, let's say, or which type of agreement. Yeah, which type of agreement you would like to have. You can have work from home agreement, so you can work from anywhere you want or you can have an agreement work from offices, you know, each type of agreement has some advantages and disadvantages due to law in each country or based on the labor law uh, in the Czech Republic. But this is a great option uh, for everybody. You can choose, you know, you don't need to go into the office. You can choose, you know, where do you like to work? And also you, you can work for, uh, for others from Thailand, for example, if you want, or from Spanish or whatever. You know, so this is a great option and great move uh, at Avast, what uh, we introduced. And and also the next thing, what we are looking forward, how we are going to communicate in, in our offices, because this new cooperation and new agreement also uh, will have an impact on the office layout and everything. So we are building and we are crafting, let's say, a new layout of the offices for this type of new cooperation. A few years ago, or even one one years ago, it was quite crazy that if you are going to office, you you have to book a table or you have to book some space, you know, where you will sit these days. And and now it, it will be almost the reality because the new offices shouldn't be as as now, but it will be totally, let's say, mainly about the community, you know, uh, something like uh, open open spaces for for everybody, and okay, everybody can join collaborate and communicate face to face, then you can go home and work hardly with Zoom Friday days uh, on, your, on your stuff. So this is, I think, exciting future uh, for us and we are definitely looking forward. And from the design perspective, uh, as, uh, as Amal said, uh, we are also looking forward how this online experience, when everything is tracked, everything is, uh, is online from the design comments feedback perspective, we will transform into the offline world and, and how we are connect these advantages of online communication with advantages uh, of the, of, uh, of the online com uh, offline communication, where you can put more emotion and more feelings into discussion in, into, the, in, into the feedback. So this will be, I think, real game changer uh, for, uh, for everybody. Because right now we, in the past, we saw just advantages and disadvantages from the one route, be offline and sit in the office. Now, almost one year or more than one, one year, we see advantages and disadvantages when you are working online, everybody. And now we can have an option to combine it together and just take the best from both work. So this is, I think, really great. Thank you so much.
Thank you. And we actually have right now a question for you. If you know the answer, you can answer. If you don't know, yep. you cannot answer. So the guy named Andre is asking, hi, Martin, regarding the remote office contract, how did you make it legal in Czech Republic? Uh, this is a tough question. <laughs> this is mainly about, about the HR. Uh, lots of employees had the same type of question, how this can be legal in the Czech Republic. Uh, and because we have this strict two contracts, uh, if you have a remote office contract, you have also another type of disadvantages, you know, uh, another set of vacations. Oh no, and, and, and right now we, 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 don't, we don't have vacations because we have unlimited vacations, uh, but it is also fixed with the labor code somehow. Uh, so spe specifically, I don't have clear answer, you know, how it is, it is made from a legal perspective. But I am 100% sure that it is it is totally fine because guys uh, check it a lot and also lots of employees had this type of concern. Yeah, thank you so much, Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah there is one more thing. Uh, due to uh, due to payments, you have to pick in which country you will work next 30 days. So this is this is this is mandatory stuff. And we have several countries which are, let's say, forbidden that you cannot work. I don't know in, uh, for example, Thailand, because Czech Republic and Thailand doesn't have agreement between cooperation on some on some on some level. So some countries are forbidden, but in the European Union, almost everything is open. US is open, and lots of other countries in in Asia are also open. Uh, so. This is everything what I know and what I can share about it. Yeah, thank you so much. And Peter, how do you see the future? I I see the future that you know. Um, I I really like what Michal mentioned at the beginning that you know, and and you Kate, you mentioned as well. Like everyone wanted to be remote, or like everyone wanted to try being remote, and now when everyone is forced to be remote, they wanna they wanna return back to the office. So I think the future is going to be somewhat a hybrid model of remote versus um, uh, on-site, where I think you know GitHub really solves this really well. They offer you like if you want to work remotely, feel free to do that. Um, if you want to work in the office, you can do both, and they have like uh, multiple offices around the world for people who want to um, who want to um, work remotely, but they can still return back to the office. And they actually saw a pattern in, in their you know, employees' behavior. Like not everyone, of course, follows that pattern, but there, there were employees that would just go remotely, remote, fully remote for two years, and then they would return back to the office because they miss the people, right? Like they miss the collaboration with people. Um, you know, for me, there's nothing, there's, there's no bigger, there isn't a bigger satisfaction than cracking a really difficult design challenge together with another designer at a whiteboard. So I honestly prefer being on site, um, you know, really ping-ponging the ideas of each other, having a, having another designer next to you, just drawing things on the whiteboard. Um, that person is your sounding board. It's just, you know, I think, I think, I, yeah, I, I think I said it, like the hybrid model is, I think, the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, Michal, what do you think about the future? Uh, okay, so let's wait. I take my crystal ball, ball and I have a look. Uh, and I can see there that uh, maybe in the end it could be a little bit different as we think now. Uh, but to more seriously, uh, I can see some trends which will probably continue as uh, we are going through some disruption phase that speed up a lot of things. Uh, and some changes are irre irreversible and uh, we only need to adapt. Uh, I totally agree uh, in like a uh, mix between remote and in person. Uh, for example, we know that uh, after the COVID will be away and we can go back to work. So uh, that we will have it uh, in Commercial Banka uh, two days uh, in the office and uh, three days uh, for remote. Uh, but it will be up to the uh, specific teams uh, how they will uh, set up. And maybe I would like to share with you my guest about 
whole our area. It's some, let's say, some helicopter view, what I can see. Uh, I can see high market demand for designers as uh, more and more companies uh, find out that they are one of the key elements to be here in the future. Uh, more and more traditional companies will find out that they are technological companies. We as a bank, uh, we are a great example. We won't be large marble building anymore. Uh, I think that uh, top designers will uh, have a whole world open and uh, biggest change must happen on the side of the traditional companies. Uh, a strong name uh, or brand will not be enough. Uh, there will still be some exceptions, uh, but not so many. And uh, if you want uh, attract them, uh, so you need to change. Uh, more designers will be looking and asking for, I think, meaningful, uh, for, the, for the meaning of uh, what they, uh, they are doing. Uh, they want to help uh, real people, not only uh, finish tasks. Uh, I think that designers wants to have uh, certain conditions and freedom, uh, as we already mentioned, uh, maybe the working uh, condition, uh, a great example uh that give give uh, get the, give them enough space to come up with some uh, ideas the, the right solution for the problem uh cut the long story short i think that designers will choose companies not the other way around uh after all the fact uh, that i am here now uh, as a representative of let's say old and traditional world old and traditional bank uh, i'm here today with you uh be purely technological companies, uh, it uh, also shows that something is changing. So this is my view for the future. I really like your view because, you know, I think this year get us more united, no matter what kind of business we have. Even my mom, who's work in a small government company, started to use Skype. They never use Skype. They're not using computers at all. And now they have some technologies. So, uh, yeah, great. And uh, we have our last but not the least panelist ready to share his story. So, Peter, I will give the platform for you. Thank you. Let me share my screen. Oops, we got to open privacy uh, options and allow it. <laughs> Okay, let's see if it works. Okay, hopefully you see my screen. Yeah. Just... Okay, okay, awesome. I can't see myself, but <laughs> that's fine. All right, so I would love to present you um, maybe a different spin on, on the story. It's, it's not about the story, it's about how we work and how we are organized. Um, and this is basically something that really helped us survive the COVID. So let me just start uh, with our team structure. Um, we are organized in a, in a thing called tribes and each of these tribes then consists of multiple product teams. Um, this is a product team and that product team consists of designer, engineering manager and product manager. Um, there's, of, there's, of course, a handful of engineers that are part of the team. And this one product team is, uh, is responsible for solving, let's say, a, a problem or, um, you know, addressing some kind of business opportunity or delivering a feature, depending on how you frame the objective or the initiative that they will be working on. But they're really like um, empowered team um, that can come up with their own solutions to the problem that they are addressing. Now, these tribes that I talked about uh, re actually represent a high-level user needs that Product Board is trying to solve. So, for example, the first one called Insights is about us as a Product Board helping our customers get insights about their customers. So what we actually help our customers is to learn more about who is your audience, where they're coming from, what are their needs, um, what's the segment, right? So you better understand your audience that you're building your product for. Um, another tribe, for example, product decision and roadmaps, this is a tribe that I am leading. 
Um, as you can see, there's a uh, design manager. Um, there are also um, uh, directors of project management and directors of engineering. And you know, these three actually form another trial. Um, we call this like the holy trinity of product management or product development. Uh, so we really want to have a designer, an engineer, and the product manager uh, represented on each level. So not just the, like the smallest product teams, but also on the higher level of the organization. So a tribe leads. Um, this is sort of like a mix of of uh, of uh, two models that are described in Org Design for Design Orgs book. Um, it's something between a decentralized embedded team and uh, strategic partnerships, uh, because we already have those strategic partnerships on the tribe uh, lead level. And then each of the designers are part of the design team. So a designer at product board actually has two identities, a product team and then a design team. This really helps us ensure that the product team is um, uh, responsible for their own features and they can deliver quickly as, uh, as, uh, as quickly as possible and as well as maintain the consistency. So, you know, you have these designers working on different parts of the product, but we are still working on one product. So it's really, really, really crucial for us that we stay aligned. The alignment is one of the, I would say, one of the most expensive, most expensive parts of the, of the designer's job here. Now, I talked about the, the team structure, but I wanna, what I want to show you now is how do we make sure that we are aligned? And this is really, really related to the COVID time because uh, you know, when I started, I was the second designer. It would be very easy to collaborate with another designer because we actually sat next to each other. So if I had an, a design idea, I could just like, you know, hey, pat him on the shoulder. Can you take a look at this? What do you think of this? Do you, do you think it makes sense? Uh, do you have any feedback? But now, you know, the team counts uh, 14 members. And so, you know, this kind of feedback process breaks. Um, and we implemented some of the design ceremonies that work for us. Uh, we have design weekly. So we meet, uh, it's sort of like a design all hands. So we meet once per week and we discuss design ops things. Then we have design crits. And I will actually, I have a dedicated slide to design crits, so I'll get to it, uh, which happens two times per week. And we have a, a, a pretty uncommon thing called design advisory. Um, this design advisory is a session where we actually uh, where we actually show our work or discuss our processes with a design advisor. Uh, his name is Joshua Goldenberg. He's a former head of design at Slack and is now uh, VP of design at Loom. And he's really, really, really great designer, has seen a lot, has scaled a few companies, few design orgs. So that's super helpful for us to make sure that as we're growing, we're not implementing processes that would you know, push back on our growth. Then we have weekly Slack updates. I believe you don't have to have a, um, a status meeting. Um, it's just like a simple Slack message is completely enough to ensure that everyone understands where, what you're gonna work on, where you're at, uh, whether you're a blog or whether you need someone else's help. And there are pair designs. Pair designs, I believe it's something that we do maybe not on a daily basis, but every other day, I would say there's a pair design session. And you can do pair design sessions with uh, designers within your tribe, but also with designers uh, outside of your tribe. So for example, growth is a tribe that goes across all the tribes, right? There's not growth in just a specific part of the track. It's, uh, it's across the whole thing. So even these uh, part design sessions are really, really helpful. And it just you know, improves the team bonding. And once you manage to design something really good with other designer, you just, you know, you become partners in crime. And Last but not least is the T Design Async Crit. It's a Slack channel, and I'll talk more about it in a second. So the design crits, I believe this is a this is one of the most important design meetings that we have during the week. Um, this is really helpful in terms of uh, aligning ourselves and also um, around getting a proper feedback. Uh, since we have people, you know, that are dedicated to design system, they can give you like a really, really good uh, UI or, you know, component feedback. We have this kind of, this is like a, a screenshot from a notion uh, where we actually keep our agenda and you have to nominate your topic 
and then you know if there's more multiple topics you you have to prioritize but that doesn't really happen because people are really uh people are really putting them uh in advance but uh you know you, what i want what i just want to highlight here is that we actually have like two joint tribes um for in the future we want to separate this and have a crit per tribe but for now this is this is this is quite enough because there's not that much designers on the team um so it makes sense to to merge these two tribes and and have uh, a specific part of the product tribe plus cross product tribe so uh, for example insights as i mentioned plus scale which is another tribe that goes across the across every part of the product uh, this is just like a snippet that um, I wanted to show you. There's not just the topics that you want to discuss, um, but there's also like a, a principles that we've implemented. Uh, my my favorite is listen then respond. So basically, every time you get a feedback from another designer or from another person on the call, you first press C in Figma, you capture that feedback, and then you can respond it. Um, and you know, one thing that we really used to forget about is making sure that we acknowledge what works. So, um, you know, as designers, we're, we're very critical and, uh, and uh, we tend to just uh, point out things that don't work, but also making sure that you share a positive feedback and then you express like, hey, these parts really, really work. That's super helpful for the designer to understand, okay, so this is great. I'm gonna keep it as it is. I'm gonna focus on things that don't work. So making sure that uh, you acknowledge what works is a is a really good really good way how to uh, improve your designs. Then, as I mentioned, the T Design Async Crit it's a it's a channel. So, you know, regarding the crits, there you know two times per week, and if you might have some some small thing that you would like to show that you have, that you like to get feedback on, but it's gonna be you know the next crit is gonna be in two days. So what can you do instead is just like record a loom. I don't know if you guys are uh, familiar with Loom, but basically the software is about you know recording your screen and your face, and and then you can just copy link and share it. So it's super easy to use, very quick, and you can just very quickly share a walkthrough of your Figma prototype. And for example, this is a snippet of Julia, one of the designers on on my tribe, and uh, you know you can actually read here that she's sharing. Um, she's sharing a, a small, uh, a smaller design problem or like a smaller design challenge, and she's asking for feedback. Then there are some rules, obviously, in the in the Slack channel that you know you should use uh, color coding if it's uh, like an urgent thing and you need feedback on it as soon as possible, or you know if it can wait a couple of days or if there's no deadline. And uh, I actually had a, a GIF, but it was it was it was way too big and I and I couldn't plug it into the. Um, Google Slides, and I wanted to show you that people are actually using this channel quite frequently. And this is not our invention. This is coming from our design advisor. They are working like this at Loom. It works for them. It works for us. And it's like a, a really good opportunity. If you have smaller things, you're afraid to bring them to a, a bigger session, and you can just share them, and, and you'll get the, a meaningful feedback. And then this has been mentioned a couple of times, but the tooling I think tooling is the essential thing for you to to work remotely. Um, Figma, obviously, I mentioned the openness of the Figma and and the and the billing model. Um, we invite everyone into Figma, whether it's a sales, marketing, customer success, um, engineers. Everyone gets access to Figma. Obviously, there is some permissioning, so not everyone can edit your files, but everyone can access them and can see what you're working on. What's the latest? Uh, what are other explorations that you've explored, and so on. The second is Loom. It allows you to record screen. Um, we also use Loom to document our design or product decisions and then share them on Slack. And so that everyone can actually see how you're thinking about the feature or how you're thinking about the problem and can give you some feedback, not just on the designs, but also on the process. Well, this is product board. So we use product board to build product board. Um, as one of our coworkers like to say, we drink our own champagne. And uh, definitely product boards help with remote collaboration, especially for PMs. You know, you can see all your feedback that you actually gathered over the time. And uh, you can always access the roadmap. 
you can see the designs attached to the feature description. So it's super helpful. And I'm not selling it, but as a designer, I, I have added Firebird to my design toolkit. Um, then obviously Slack, Zoom, or any kind of video conference tools. And lastly, Notion, which is uh, where we keep all our organization administration stuff, or basically any kind of doc that you just need to craft and you just need to connect some other sources to it. So Notion is awesome. And that's it. That's everything that I wanted to talk about. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you so much for sharing all of it. I especially like the way how you're making this uh, reviews in Slack with color coding. I want to steal this one and say, like, I invented it. So I will use it some to myself. Uh, we're almost done. We have one question from the chat. And I would like to you to like shortly answer to this one. So how hiring and onboarding processes was changed in your companies? So Peter, let's start with you since you just talked. Sorry, I just wanted to get a get a glass of water. Um, uh, <laughs> no, no, that's fine, that's fine. So hiring and onboarding processes changed in your companies. It hasn't changed well. It hasn't changed much because we already had some remote working um, uh, co-workers. For example, Julia, she's working from Berlin. And uh, uh, so, you know, basically we have like an onboarding guide drafted in Notion, obviously. And that's, uh, that's sort of the thing that we share with them. It's their go-to resource uh, for their first few days. Every onboarding meeting happens uh, on Zoom. So whether it's a, a product onboarding, product training, or it's anything around HR, people ops processes. Um, so we haven't really changed much, but what I like um, is the perspective that Amal shared, like how he felt, and I've never thought about it. How, you know, how do I, how am I gonna keep my newcomer feel motivated and engaged all the time? Because you know, the first few days are very, very critical for success of that newcomer. And, uh, Maybe I'm wrong, but generally what I think helps the most is just like you hang out, you know, you you, sh you have like an open Zoom room, you, anyone can join anytime. And uh, you just, you know, try to design things together. So you, you spend like two or three hours on Zoom in Figma, you design things together. And that really builds that kind of relationship with either your reports or your managers. Thank you. And um, Michal, how processes changed in commercial Banca? Uh, okay, so uh, in hiring, uh, so we already had uh, before COVID some application that uh, leads you and uh, telling you what to what some paperwork you, you need to do. Uh, so we already uh, uh, had this application uh, regarding onboarding. Uh, so. Mm, just to be fair, this is what we are working on. Uh, as we have some basic points, uh, we have some manuals uh, helping you how to how we can get uh, and connect uh, uh, to the bank. Uh, there are big differences uh, if you are, uh, let's say, designers working on PC on bank PC, or if you are designer uh, with Mac. Uh, as you know, we are the bank and, and the security is, every, is everything. So to, to get into the bank with the Mac is uh, a little bit complicated. Uh, so we have some like manual and we have a body which can help you to get uh, uh, to easy and smoothly get you in the, in the bank. And to, what I just uh, saw like last week uh, was a great uh, onboarding process as an in inspiration in Spotify. And this is something what I opened uh, on our uh, management meeting that uh, I'll do. I want to do the same, just to have a like sets of, of steps uh, within first three five days when you are uh, with us, uh, and ju just to have there some checklist, not to forget uh, something, and to lead you uh, smoothly uh, and to, to to put you put you on uh, on board. But this is something what is uh, ahead of us. This is not what we have right now but uh, I, I want to have it in like a couple, couple weeks. Thank you so much. And Martin, what's changed in the last? Yeah, so it was 
change a lot because, for example, right right now uh, the whole whole hiring process is uh, is online remotely. Also, with the signing of paper and sending device or hardware or whatever we want, because we are also hiring from another part of the world. Uh, so this was changed from the process and HR perspective, and from from the our team and from the design perspective, uh, it was also changed because. Uh, in the past, you know, newcomer uh, came to your company or to your team, and you can sit with them uh, eight hours per day and try to uh, explain and explore with with him or with her what we are doing, why we are doing, how our design is working, what our processes looks like, and so on. So you can be something like the the babysitter and and help uh, with the onboarding uh, in person. But with with the offline or uh, with the online world, it it was quite complicated, so we've developed, and we are still developing, uh, like let's uh, like the big map. What you should do uh, based on your on your role, because we have copywriters, UI researcher, UI designers, UX designer, uh, product discovery designers, and you can pick your role, what you are, and which type of product you are working. You can see the rule, you know, which steps you have to see. Uh, which tell them which elements and which board and which designs you you should check who are the key contact for this type of segment and so on so this new let's say onboarding map uh, help us a lot and in the future we will still working on it and uh, this can be a really big game changer thank you for us strike uh, we had some online onboarding before the COVID times but the most part of our onboarding was offline like somebody sit near you and help you with the design and we are really into automatization of every design processes so what we did during this year after practicing how we should organize things we not only uh, make aut automatization for creation of onboarding for newcomer but also for creation like a checklist for managers who need to remember how many meetings they need to set up uh, in which chats we need to add their newcomers. And right now, when somebody new is joining us, we just click one button, we create the whole new project in Rike and assign the right people and everybody know what we need to do in what time and how it should be done. And even if we all will come back to the office, we will continue to use it because it's saving a lot of time and resources for everybody and we're not losing any important information. And also uh, in marketing design, we have four teams and me and Amal are in a different teams and we have different onboardings. And Amal already shared about his article uh, on the medium about web design and onboarding. So maybe you share a bit more about it. Yep, of course, of course. Uh, yeah, uh, I encourage everyone to see this onboarding uh, and onboarding guide in the medium. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that every newcomer has a body yeah, as a coordinator, in another word, uh, which which uh, is responsible for him to, or her to go through all the process. Also, we included a timeline. For example, newcomer can log into Figma and see the timeline, which uh, uh, like the events he's gonna go through. This is from the from the HR, IT ops about the about the stationery, about the MacBook, and so on. The uh, also and um, information from the uh, coordinator like the for example for the first uh, month he's gonna do this and this for the uh, so month number two is gonna be done this and this steps and so on it's very it's very helpful also we included the cards uh, cards of, of members of key stakeholders with the photos for example it's it's quite difficult for for newcomers like for example to chat in slack uh, a proper person about the uh, about the certain question uh, so now we, we yeah we try to make as uh, as easier and pleasant and comfortable as as possible in this guide. Yeah, thank you so much, Mal. So we don't have any other questions. I think that's because we are all so smart and giving all the answers right on on a way. And there is I one think... question. There Where's is one, one question. What are, what are your what? thoughts on Figma versus Miro? Yeah. Ah. Okay. We can vote or, or discuss. So we already mentioned it a bit, but we can discuss it again. So people, what do you think about Figma versus Miro? Martin, why won't you be first? Yeah, so okay, maybe I, I, I will take it. Uh, there are 
two different, you know. It can look that Figma and Miro, they are almost, almost the same, but uh, Figma is focused mainly more on the designers and mainly expectation from the stakeholders, uh, developers, and mainly sales guys, product managers, and, and top managers is that, okay, Figma is something forbidden for me, you know, I cannot work with that, I can just see the design, I can just comment it, but that's it. So it is, it is quite a magic tool. But Miro is, is more accessible for this type of audience and uh, to creating a bigger picture and bigger understanding what is happening. And also, uh, and other stakeholders can, can work with the Miro very easily. And you can run the workshop in, in the Miro and everything can be doc documented. And then you as a design team, you can take the best output from the Miro and translate it into the Figma and to connect these feedbacks and these outputs with directly with your design. So it, it's not about Figma versus Miro, but it is about Figma and Miro. And these two tools can work together because Figma is mainly focused for designing and comment the design. And Miro is, is mainly for the strategic option and strategic reason for, for a bigger audience. Great. Okay. So my, um, I would say, expectation and my understanding. Yeah, cool. Michal, what do you think? Well, I think I have nothing to add. Uh, Martin mentioned it uh, and explained it in, in the way I see it. Uh, maybe there was some question, uh, Miro versus Fig Gem. Am I, am I right? Yep. Oh, yeah, it was Fig Gem. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. Uh, it was uh, Fig to, be, no. to be honest, I have only short experience with Fig Gem. Uh, so if you have some someone from you uh, has already some deeper experience, so you can explain. I played it with, with it for a couple minutes. We actually beta tested FigJam at Trackboard. We have a pretty good relationship and partnership with, with Figma. And uh, I have to say, like, it makes sense why you, as a why you as a designer should leave Figma for another tool, right? So if you just need to do a whiteboarding exercise, um, and it's super easy to use. Um, we, you know, we actually had like an exercise together with another designers where we um, just tear apart, we tear apart the, the fig gem UI and we would just like, hey, does it make sense? Why are these elements so big? You know, it's completely inconsistent with the rest of the app. And, and uh, actually we came to a conclusion that probably it makes sense. Um, to have it different because you're including even other personas from your process. Um, so we actually use it. We, we started using it, we adopted it, um, and I honestly really like it. So I think Fig Gem is going to eat Miro. Yeah, maybe one day. Uh, I would like to add that I, I, I participated at uh, Config 2021 and Fig Gem is really, really cool and easy to use. Yep, and I think we will adopt as well. And so instead of Miro, but maybe yeah, one day Fig Jam will eat Miro. <laughs> we'll see. But from my uh, short experience, I, I saw uh, still some like advantages, uh, big advantages uh, in Miro right now, as we are uh, using Miro as a facilitator, as workshop facilitators, and there are some specific features uh, we really need to uh, make facilitate, facilitate uh, as, as great as possible. So maybe one day we'll see, we are looking forward, but we'll see in the future, not now. Cool, thank you so much for your answers and sorry, but I didn't read it right. I forgot my glasses. So uh, we're almost at the end and i would like to all of us to use this opportunity to inspire people who are looking at us online or will watch this in the future do you have something to say to inspire all of these amazing designers so uh why don't we start with martin uh, Any I, I i'm thinking <laughs> uh, the first thing, this opportunity that we can we can work online, unlock a lot of options to not just work locally, you know, at, at your uh, perimeter or in your country, but right now you can think, okay, 
I would like to work for Netflix. I would like to work for Spotify. And right now you can do that. You know, there are almost no obstacles and no fear that, okay, I have to reallocate and what about my family, my friend and whatever. No, well, right now you don't need to care. You know, you just need the place where you, where you can work in your home, in your office, or you can rent the office for this type of work, but you can choose your dream. You know, you can choose your, your dream company. You know, if it is game industry, or it is the music or entertainment industry, whatever you want right now is, is available. And uh, this is, I think, the great option and the great opportun opportunity for all of us, and especially on the design, because a lot of company right now are at the beginning with the design process. They are trying to understand what is the user experience, what is the design. And lots of companies are still engineering or, or product driven, not not users or customers driven uh, company. And with this big market, you can do almost whatever you want and help in which type of companies you, you would like to help. So this is, I think, exciting times and, and the great opportunity for you guys to, to finish uh, and go with to your dream. Thank you so much, Martin. Amal, what are your inspiration words for people? Yeah, uh, the the competition between designers is gonna is gonna grow grow it's every day uh, every every hour I would say yep. And I would like to encourage people to be brave and bold uh, version of yourself every every day. And, and don't forget about the formula I, I share with you about the obstacle response and outcome. It's, it, it really works. Thank you. Thank you, Amal. Michal, do you have anything to say? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, I think we are lucky that uh, for our discipline, the, the world is open. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe a couple of words. Take feedback as a gift, more listen, uh, less talking and uh, make together uh, the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you. And Peter, it's only it, you. Do you have it's, it's super hard to follow after you. Um, <laughs> it's uh, such inspirational speeches. Um, I think, you know, with the current situation, I would just, I really like what Martin said, plus one to that. You know, now you have, if you don't like your job, you have the opportunity to change it because everyone is hiring and everyone has been through the transformation. So if you want to apply to a different, you know, company, different job, just go ahead and do it. Now it's the chance. But, you know, also let's be appreciative of what we have. Like, you know, our job allows us to work from home. We haven't really lost our um, our um, jobs, right? Like we, we still, you know, can earn money. There are people who don't have that luxury. Uh, people from hospitality sector. Um, so let's appreciate what we have, and at the same time, let's not forget about the work-life balance and and about uh, our own mental health. Yeah, thank you so much. So thank you all, dear gentlemen, for joining us today at this conversation. I get a lot of helpful insights. I hope you get a lot of helpful insights. And I also hope that everybody have a lot of helpful insights. So we're finishing for today. Uh, if you will, our audience, if you will have any questions, I'm sure you will find a way how to ask us. And if you can follow these guys on social media, do that. And also follow us, Reg Design. So thank you so much. And Anton, are you still here? Can you close us? Yes, yeah, sure. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you to all panelists for participation here, and hope to see you again in our next meetups as a speakers or uh, at least as guests. Uh, yeah, and um, keep subscribing to our uh, YouTube and our meetup.com to to follow all our events here uh online uh still but we uh hopefully uh, will be back offline with with uh cool meetups and cool after parties after meetups with uh eating pizza and drinking something um so uh have a good evening for today and uh, stay tuned with Reich. bye bye see you guys <laughs>